Welcome to Dimensional Analysis. In this lesson, we're going to talk about Dimensional Analysis, which is a method for converting units. It's helpful for us to be able to convert units because sometimes when we're measuring a quantity, we can get a measurement in a unit that's not quite what we want, but it's still accurate. Uh, for example, take mass. If you take the mass of something, you can measure that in pounds, kilograms, grams, tons, atomic mass units. These are all valid measurements of mass but we want to be able to convert between them so that we can use the type of unit that's most convenient for the situation. Let's look at a series of examples to show us how we can convert between units. In our first example, we have the question, how many feet are in three miles? Now, I'm going to need some more information here, probably about the relationship between feet and miles. So I can look at a conversion chart like this. This chart gives us several different quantities, length, volume, mass, energy, and pressure and then gives us a bunch of conversion factors in the next column. Conversion factors are basically identities. They tell us what one unit is in terms of another unit. So you can see for length it says one meter is 1.0936 yards uh, and so on and so forth. On the right side of this chart it says metric prefixes. This is a handy chart if you don't really remember uh, what your metric prefixes are and what they mean. Uh, the way these work is you can tack them on to any of the metric units here so, for example, one meter would become one kilometer, and that means there's a thousand meters. So the question that brought me here in the first place was how many feet are in three miles? So if we look through this chart, there is a conversion factor here that would give us more information about miles and feet and how they're related. And that's right here. One mile equals 5,280 feet. So I'm going to take that information and go back to this question. And what I'm going to do is, to show my work, I'm going to write out what I know one mile equals five thousand two hundred and eighty feet so now I'm going to apply this conversion factor to help me solve this problem so I'm going to start with the three miles that it gives me in the problem so I'm going to write out three miles and then I'm going to multiply it by a fraction and we're going to fill in what the fraction is in a second here basically we're going to take this conversion factor right here one mile equals five thousand two hundred eighty feet and we're going to plug it into this fraction. And the way I'm going to do that is by recognizing that my original quantity, 3 miles, has the unit miles. So on the bottom of the fraction, I'm going to write 1 mile. On the top of the fraction, I'm going to fill in the rest of the conversion factor, 5,280 feet. And now, make sure you're writing in the units when you do this. It's really important for dimensional analysis to keep the units in the entire way through. So I put this conversion factor into a fraction and I'm multiplying the original quantity by it. What this is going to do is let me cancel out the unit miles. They divide out because I have miles divided by miles and then I can do the rest of the math just as it says. 3 times 5,280 divided by 1 and that's going to give us 15,840 feet. That's how many feet are in 3 miles. All I've done is convert 3 miles into an equivalent measurement in feet. Let's look at an example that takes into account uh, metric prefixes so we can get some practice with that. The next question is how many grams is 10 pounds? So this question is basically asking us to convert from pounds to grams. So again we're going to need to look at that chart, uh, the conversion factor chart, to get some idea of how grams and pounds might be related. So let's look at that chart. Well I know pounds and grams are both mass, so I'm going to look at the mass category and see what we have here. Now, unfortunately, I don't see anything about grams, but I do see pounds here, so this one's probably going to be useful. So one kilogram is 2.2046 pounds. The other thing I know is that I can take kilograms and get regular grams out of it. I just have to make use of this metric prefix to understand that kilo means 1,000 grams. So let's take that back and write it into our problem. So I have the two conversion factors written here that I'm going to use to convert 10 pounds into grams. So just like I started with last time, I'm going to write out 10 pounds, and I'm going to multiply that by a fraction. Now, which one of these am I going to use first? Well, the unit I'm starting with is pounds, so I'm going to be interested in this one first. So I'm going to put 2.2046 pounds on the bottom of this fraction, and on the top I'm going to fill in the rest, one kilogram. Now I'm not at grams yet so I need another fraction and just put these in a chain. I don't need to solve anything yet. I know that one kilogram is 1,000 grams 
So just like I did before, I'm going to match this unit on top with the next thing I write on the bottom. I'm going to take this one kilogram, I'm going to write it here, one kilogram, and take this 1,000 grams and bring it down here. So now I have two conversion factors that I'm multiplying this 10 pounds by. And that's going to get me to grams because I can go through this whole thing and watch the units change. Pounds divided by pounds cancels out. Kilograms divided by kilograms cancels out. So I know that my final answer is going to be in grams. And that's what I want because it's asking me how many grams is 10 pounds. So if I go through these steps, I'm going to find that 10 times 1,000 divided by 2.2046 divided by 1 is going to equal 4,545 grams. So I've changed 10 pounds to 4,545 grams. Now in this example, we chain two conversion factors together because we have to change the unit more than once. You can put as many conversion factors in a row as you need, as we'll see in this next example. Here we have one where we don't even need to use a chart. How many seconds are there in two years? I'm going to pause the video here to give you a chance to work through this problem first. Once you're ready to move ahead, click play and you'll be able to see the solution. I'm going to start this again by listing my conversion factors. First we can say that one year equals 365 days. Then we can break that down to days, so one day equals 24 hours. Then we can say that one hour is 60 minutes, and one minute is 60 seconds. So you can already maybe start to see the chain here. We're going from years all the way to seconds, which is what this question wants us to do. So let's start writing this out. We have two years as our starting point. The first conversion factor has to have years on the bottom, because that's what I started with. And if I look at my list, I know that years goes with days. So I have, in one year, I have 365 days. I already know I'm on the right track because these cancel out. Years in the bottom, years written here. So I'm going to keep going with this. My next conversion factor should have days on the bottom. So one day, because I want to cancel out this day. And I know I can break down days into hours. So we're going to say that the one day is 24 hours. I'm going to keep going here. Next, we're going to match hours. One hour is 60 minutes. And one minute is 60 seconds. And now if I go through, I can check all my work here. Hours cancel out hours. Minutes cancel out minutes. And I'm left with seconds, which was my goal in the first place. So I know I've set this up properly. Once I multiply this through, I'm going to end up with 63,072,000 seconds. This next problem is an example of converting units that are what we call compound units. So this problem is to convert 35 miles per hour to meters per second. Both miles per hour and meters per second are compound units because they involve a combination of two units. The first one is miles and hours. And the second one is meters and seconds. So what I can do with this one is write it out like this. 35 miles per hour. And I'm going to want to convert that to meters per second. So you can see by the way I'm writing this with the fraction that in my final units I want meters on top and seconds on the bottom. Like we've done before, our first step is to go through and figure out which of these conversion factors are going to be helpful for us. So first let's find out some miles to meters relationship. Well I have miles to kilometers here and I can use my metric prefix to get that down to meters. In terms of hours and seconds we just talked about that in the last problem so we'll be able to use those conversion factors. So let's make sure we write all these out. Now we're ready to solve the problem. So we'll start by writing out 35 miles per hour. And we're going to start to change these but the trick is for a compound unit to only change one at a time. So let's start with miles. I'm going to try and change the miles to meters. So miles is on the top here, so I'm going to put it on the bottom so that it cancels out. And I know I can change miles to kilometers. So I'm going to put 1.6093 kilometers on top, one mile on the bottom, 
that's going to let me change things to kilometers. My next conversion factor is going to change the kilometers into meters. 1000 meters using this conversion factor here. So at this point I've reached my goal of getting meters per second. I got the meters part of the meters per second. So now I want to change the time units. Let's do that in a different color. Uh, I've got hours on bottom, so this time I'm going to want to put hours on top. And again, our goal is seconds, so we want to get smaller here. The next step down from an hour is a minute. So we have one hour is equal to 60 minutes. There, I just used this one. My last step is going to be to use the one minute to 60 seconds conversion factor to change to seconds. So I'm going to put one minute on the top of the conversion factor, and I'm going to put 60 seconds on the bottom. Now I want to go through and make sure that I did cancel everything I need to cancel. So I have hours on the bottom here, which cancels out hours on the top here. Minutes divided by minutes is also dropped out. So I'm left with meters on top, seconds on the bottom, and that meets my goal of meters per second. So I can go through now and carry out the math. I have 35 times 1.6093 times 1,000 times 1 times 1. I'm going to divide all of that by 60 and divide it by 60 again. And this should give me 15.5 meters per second as an equivalent speed to 35 miles per hour. That wraps up our video on dimensional analysis. Any questions you have on this method, make sure you write them down or highlight them in your notes and bring them in with you to class.